while ago I started a, a winter camping series. Uh, one of the things that I covered was uh, the military sleep system, the modular sleep system, the Equex system, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a three bag tiered system. It starts with a black intermediate bag, and then the green bag that goes over the top of that patrol bag, and then the camouflage Gore-Tex bivy sack. And I think that's a, a great place uh, if you can get to that uh, to be for your, your winter sleeping arrangements, but that's not, those things have, have not been around forever, right? For lots of years, people have gone winter camping without that. Uh, people have gone winter camping without super expensive down bags or, or super duper expensive synthetic bags too. And if we just use the same principles that we use in our clothing, as like the layering, loosening and layering, we can achieve the same effect with our sleeping system. So back in the day when I taught for Northern Tier, uh, we used all kinds of stuff um, for uh, different sleep systems for kids all the way down to 10 years old we'd have them out in the woods when it was 20 below so it's a very realistic goal and it needs to start with insulation on the ground now I did a whole video on uh, natural insulation beds and I covered pine straw and pine boughs and, and cattails and grasses and uh, different twigs and, and different things like that to get you up off the ground so that's a viable option right off the beginning. If you can't do that, then you need to use some sort of synthetic material. Uh, Thermarest, you can get them cheap sometimes on Craigslist. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes they're pretty spendy. But it makes a really good first layer to lay down on. Now, if you don't have a Thermarest or you have something cheaper, you can go with a closed cell foam. This is a folding foam pad. It's uh, European in origin and it's pretty thin but if you stack a few of these up or if you go to Walmart or, or wherever and get a closed cell foam pad, a yoga mat, if you get two or three of those things and stack them on top of, top of each other you're still going to achieve that dead air space. And we don't want to lay those right on the ground either. We want to have some sort of ground cloth laid down. This is a super cheap ground cloth. It's two uh, heavy duty trash bags that I opened up and duct taped together. I actually made it a tarp and I used it for another video. But you can keep using these things over and over and they work fairly well if you build them properly. So to start with, we want to keep ourselves up off that ground. You can use open cell foam also. Uh, kind of, you need to experiment with this stuff and figure out what else, what's going to work out for you. Some stuff's real cheap, some stuff's real expensive. So after we have that ground pad down, I'm going to open this up so it curls out just a little bit here. I can start with another layer. Now, many years ago when my kids were first getting into camping, I went to Sam's Club and I got them these big, bulky winter bags. They said they're winter bags. I knew they weren't. They're 20 degree bags, tops. Synthetic mommy bags. All right, they've spent quite a few nights in these. The insulation's kind of beat down on them. And if you go to Goodwill or something like that, you can probably pick up a bag like this fairly cheap. Is this the only thing you want to lay in when it's you know 10 degrees out? Probably not. Me personally, I'd get cold. I get cold easy. So what you can do is take another bag. This is a summer bag. It's about a 35 degree bag. And generally, I like to add 10 to 8 degrees on every bag for how I sleep comfortably. This is a Kelty, like I say, really good little bag. Um, if it's small enough. I can stuff inside this bag. And that's sort of like that modular sleep system. If it's not uh, small enough and it's about the same size as this bag, instead of compressing it in there and fighting it, you can kind of use it for a quilt. Okay, so I just have it zipped down so the foot box is right there. I can shove the foot box of this one into here. Lay it all out, open it up, straighten it out. Because most of the insulation I'm getting is, is from the ground. It's going to be from my pad and whatever, whatever else I have underneath that. All the insulation from here when you're laying on it gets smashed, it gets crushed. So there's not a lot of insulation value in the sleeping bag itself. I have a buddy that uh, he sleeps pretty much on his pad and drapes everything else over the top of him, kind of like a quilt, uh, because he sleeps on his stomach. So works for him and we've been down below zero and it works for him just fine uh, a little trick you can do if you don't want these to slide apart I can take it kind of lay it out measure it and I can take a safety pin stick a safety pin through both of them 
it doesn't really hurt the bag that much. Now I can still zip, unzip, and when I zip it up, it lays out over the zipper, and I can do the same thing on this side. Take a safety pin, safety pin it down, and I've just added that much more insulation on top of me. I can do the same thing with a blanket if I want. I can lay it over the top of me and safety pin it down. You can even make a foot box out of it. All right, make a foot box of this. I want to bring it in. Bring it in. So I brought it down to like a tip. Bring that down, fold it under. And then I don't know if this safety pin is going to be big enough. It'll be close though. Oh yeah. Be sure you get everything all in there at once. Probably take two safety pins on this thick of a blanket. And you can do this with a fleece blanket. You can do it with a comforter from your house if you want. The big thing is, right, I made a little foot box right there, got it all pinned together. That can go right over the top. I can now spread that over. Tuck it all in and safety pin that again to the top of that. Now that's quite a bit of insulation up top and that should keep you pretty warm. One thing I would like to say though is before you go out into the woods, uh, take this stuff out in your backyard. Sleep on your deck with it. Let's go sleep out in the backyard. Uh, test it and see how it's going to work. Make sure you're going to sleep good with it because you don't want to be all the way out in the woods and find out you're sleeping miserably, get up, have to build a fire, that type of stuff. So test your gear before you take it out. But you can see really, uh, this isn't too difficult. Wintertime is a great time to be out. There's, not, there's no bugs. There's not as many people. It's just a good time to be out in the woods. So go ahead and give a shot making your own sleep system for winter camping.